what's going on, Doombots? We have another legendary spotlight, this time Invisible Woman. Again, you know I'm going in the order that I think it makes the most sense to unlock these characters. So after you've gone gotten Star Lord, I think IW is the next one. And a lot of reasons why is because of what she does for an early roster when you unlock her. So we'll go over pretty much everything, what it takes, how to unlock her, uh, where you're going to use her in general. Just know that uh, she's either the best, tied for the best, or the second best protector in the game in pretty much all game modes exclusively. She uh, is great in war on literal both sides of the war. She is great in arena on both sides of the fight. Great in raids. Great in Dark Dimension uh, 2, even 3. I used her in Dark Dimension 3. No regrets whatsoever. Just one of the overall most high-impact characters. The day you get her, you will start feeling the impact. So, talk about first. We're going to talk about availability, how quickly you can get her. So, taking a page out of the Magneto book of... Wait, how strong is my Magneto? Uh, you can actually use a legendary character... To unlock her. Uh, same way you can unlock Magneto with Phoenix, you can use the uh, Dr. Octopus to unlock her. Now, that's ridiculous. I think we all know it's way harder to get your hands on five star X Force characters than it is to get your hands on a five star Sinister Six squad in general. And of course, there are two members of the Sinister Six that have just become available both Swarm and Electro. Uh, it's unlikely that many people are going to have them at 5-star relatively soon. So the good news is the Core 5, Vulture, Rhino, Green Goblin, Shocker, and Mysterio are still totally reasonable to use to unlock her, still totally reasonable uh, to use as a team in general. It's just going to be uh, an issue of where Electro and Swarm become accessible. If I put my money on it, they will be accessible in some other endgame thing to kind of solidify how Doc Ock is an endgame legendary, not an early game legendary. But that's just my guess. She is unlocked using five Sinister Six characters at five star. Um, you can farm pretty much all the Sinister Six relatively quickly. Vulture is in the Arena Store. Rhino is in the Blitz Store. Green Goblin and Shocker both have nodes. I know they don't drop in those nodes, but they have nodes. And Mysterio is in the raid store. Uh, sometimes, I think is a bit more fair to say. Uh, most of these characters are available in not premiums and mega orbs. That might change over time, so there's always a jump. But they also do have a $24.99 pack for a guaranteed three-star of the core team. That's a huge deal. So you can jumpstart your run on this legendary for twenty four ninety nine. dollars uh, That's like four years of farming Green Goblin and Shocker, if you ask the average player in this game. Uh, that's about 490 days of trying to buy Mysterio in the raid store, because the raid store needs more character purchases. I'm going to digress a little. Uh, and that's it. So she is a really, really easy to unlock character. You can, if you wanted to, unlock her and Shuri within the first, I'd say, 90 days of gameplay because all of these characters are incredibly easy to access, incredibly accessible, pretty good at beating up on the defenders, pretty good at completing villain nodes, especially if you splash in a healer for somebody like maybe Green Goblin or, or Mysterio or Vulture, whoever the one is lagging behind the most. These guys will have a little bit of extra sustain. Pretty all-in-all -all solid team, so because it's so easy to work on these characters to help you progress through your game and to unlock not one but two legendaries, you gotta imagine this is a no-brainer. She's really easy to get. We're talking about first, first six months, easy four months, depending on when you started and when that event's in rotation, because rotations exist and that's just a thing you have to deal with if you wanna get stronger in this game. So, off the Sinister Six now, we're going to talk a little bit more about Invisible Woman's usability. So, where is she useful for? Like I've said before, everywhere. Literally everywhere. The day you get her, you throw her on your arena defense, and it's going to be harder for them to kill her. Your team. Just hard. Pair her with Minerva if you got him. Now it's going to be hard to kill a character, and Minerva can res them. Pair her with, uh, you know, a Guardians team that you've been working on, a Sinister Six team that you've been working on. You know, maybe you, you wailed out a little bit. Maybe you have, as Guardians, maybe... Really doesn't matter. She's just a phenomenal 
phenomenal defender. And I use that word loosely, obviously, because it's really hard to say phenomenal defender in this game. But she's great there. In raids, she's a very low cooldown character, but what you get when you spend her cooldowns are incredible. You gain a whole boost of survivability to an entire team, and you can do that twice, and you can kind of stagger them out. So in early raids, she will be absolutely phenomenal, even in late raids. In Dark Dimension 2, uh, she's part of what I call the Holy Trinity for Dark Dimension 2, which is Star Wars, Minerva, and IW. All three of those characters are easy to get. Um, and I use that word loosely because of Minerva. Most players in the game, if you've been playing for at least two months now, at the time of this video anyway, uh, you got a free Minerva from play. So I do know that she is a premium exclusive, but that those three characters can pretty much solo uh, the event of Dark Dimension 2. Uh, obviously, the other two characters are best characters you have, but it, with those three at the core, it really doesn't matter who four and five are. By all means, use Symbiote, Spider-Man, Carnage, Hela, Thor, doesn't matter. Those guys are going to have the sustain you need to make sure you can power through, and I've gotten a lot of feedback about those teams from people who've been taking my advice for it, and, you know, one or two three-day clears of Dark Dimension 2, assuming the normal problems with fighting the last boss node, totally reasonable, only for investing in four characters, or three characters, and then, you know, four and five being characters you were going to invest in anyway, for whatever. So, usability, literally everywhere, all the time, always. Uh, best at anything? Mm, debatable. I'm not going to go into that debate right now, because there'd be no one to give a, you know, dissenting opinion. But, for my money, I think she's one of the strongest overall protectors in the game, and we're going to take a quick look at her abilities and see why. Now, uh, keep in mind, my tier 4s aren't necessarily representative of what your tier 4 should be. They're representative of what I thought mattered or what actually mattered at a different time. We're going to start with Hard Light. Uh, when an enemy attacks this character with Barrier, attack that enemy for 250 damage instead of 200. When an enemy attacks a Fantastic Four ally, it goes from 250 to 200. Gain max health, Fantastic Four and Namor allies gain 20% max health. So when she came out, obviously using her with the Fantastic Four was like, duh, why wouldn't you use a character with her team? So this was a very important upgrade. Now, it's really only important on war offense. Um, this very infrequently are using other Fantastic Four characters with her outside of war. So this is a war-specific upgrade. I've done it. I don't regret doing it. Um, but I'm actually kind of happy it's already in because I don't know if I'd ever pull the trigger on it now. Useful for war with the Fantastic Four team. I imagine it's going to be useful for war with the Fantastic Four team when She-Hulk comes out. If you're going to place them on defense, totally reasonable. And I do imagine that a lot of these characters are going to get Fantastic Four and Namor and She-Hulk. You know, like they're just going to add that line in there. But that's a different conversation. Uh, psionic Shields. This one is almost no-brainer. Apply offense down for two turns to all enemies as opposed to just three random enemies. This is the Raid Breaker. This is where she becomes raid usable because everyone getting two turns of offense down on the other side even Dark Dimension, absolutely insane survivability. Barrier all allies for an extra 10, it would be 30 or 40% of this character's max health. Moving on to the next, Bending Light, this is another no-brainer. Uh, clear two negative effects from self and all allies as opposed to uh, three most injured allies. That's a giant, absolute team-wide, no debuff. Uh, it is only two, but Realistically, there's not many more than two debuffs you're ever going to want to really get rid of uh, with her in most of the game modes anyway. Apply stealth uh, to self and all allies. Apply defense up for two turns to uh, self and all allies. The stealth is the big deal here. It's the protect on all of the squishiest of the squishies that you have. Then, clear stealth from the highest health ally. Apply three deflect plus immunity for two turns to the highest health ally. If you have a dedicated tank on the team, uh, she will make that person a pseudo tank. They won't have taunt, but no one else can be hit, really. The final line of text is important. Clear stealth from all enemies. This is why she is so good at fighting opposing phoenixes, because she goes after phoenix. Phoenix will do her thing. Oh no, look, I'm invisible. And then she will go, nope, everyone can be seen again. And it's amazing. So, overall, great investment. Just for the tier 4 and the apply stealth to all allies. 
Uh, it really brings the kit together. Those are the only two that are relevant. Uh, Cosmic Rays, she doesn't do damage, so increasing uh, the amount of zero damage she does will just still be zero. Like zero times, you know, an extra 40% is zero. Uh, so don't really worry about that. But the barrier for 5% of this character's max health going to 10%, that could be relevant. So if, she, if you find that she's getting squished too early, maybe you want this on her basic because it also triggers on her assist, but meh, not for me. So you really only two four, tier fours that she uh, kind of needs to get the best or most value of her kit. The rest of them are completely optional. Uh, let's move into the final stage on this, which is rating. Uh, as for legendaries, like I said, she not only can be used anywhere, she's one of the best options you can be used in any game mode. So, where Black Bolt is like the best damage dealer, and Maw is a great healer with uh, his team, and even in some of the end game raids, uh, I, you know, if those are the upper echelon of legendaries, she falls just a hair short of that. Uh, she gets an A plus rating. She is just. Just phenomenal, not only the day you get her, but throughout the entire game, any investment you put in IW, uh, you will very unlikely to regret, especially uh, when it comes to war and now her being able to be used on both sides of a war team without really hurting your roster on either side. Uh, again, Dark Dimension 3, I used her. If I can use her for Dark Dimension 4, I probably will. Uh, a lot of times we get a comparison with her and Yo-Yo. It's not quite a fair comparison. Uh, you get her at five star. Um, so inherently she is just a stronger character than Yo-Yo as Yo-Yo tends to unlock at two star. Uh, that said, what Yo-Yo does might be a little bit better than her uh, for most game modes anyway, especially if you're using the right kind of comp or you're deciding how you wanna work it like with the symbiotes or with Black Bolt, you know how that works. Uh, but overall, that's the other person we were talking about before, who she's tied for the best protector. She is in that same conversation, almost without a doubt. Uh, got nothing else to say. She's an A-plus character. Get her as fast as you can. It's easy to get her. She's useful in the most game modes, and the earlier you get her, the faster you'll see how important she is. The only downside to her entire kit, bio. She is yet another amazing bio character. So unfortunate i know but uh thanks for watching guys comment below and let me know how iw has impacted you or if you're excited about getting her when she comes back in any amount of time because this video can be watched whenever so have a good night guys have a great day i've been tony scongeli and i'll catch you later